welcome everyone. Hooray to the last of our webinars this 2022. I'm Prem and your moderator this afternoon joined by Bing. Thank you everyone for taking the time to join us today as we discuss the secrets to residential lighting design. Some reminders though before we begin, we'll be opening the floor to the audience after our speakers talk, so feel free to send in your thoughts in our Zoom chat down there. Also, don't feel pressured to take notes, okay? as we'll be posting this with our other webinars to our YouTube channel soon. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please follow us at Hooray Design on YouTube. So Bing, who's going to be our speaker for today? Thanks, Prem. Our speaker this afternoon is one of Manila's top interior designers in the Philippines. She has been designing spaces for several years with a focus on illumination, and its impact to a human-centered design. As a principal designer of Hooray Design, formerly known as Heim Interiors, a graduate of interior design at the University of Santo Tomas, she shares her passion for lighting design with her team, having taken up lighting design in 2016 at the SOFA Design Institute. A member of the Philippine Institute of Interior Design, PIID, and Project Management Institute, or PMI. She is also a distinguished member of the International Interior Design Association, affiliate of the International Association of Lighting Designers, or IALD. Let us give a hooray welcome to IDR Rosie Rojales, PIID. Yay! Hello! Guys, um, thank you for, I see familiar names here, and thank you for joining us this Saturday afternoon. I know it's a long weekend, and... Uh, maybe you have plans after, but thank you for joining for um, an hour, maybe an hour of learning. No, So um, if you heard the music, Karina, we were dancing. We were feeling the, the Saturday vibe per webinar. No? So thank you. Welcome. Um, um, today I'm going to discuss the, the secrets of residential design, um, basically discussing the process of how we do um, illumination in our projects. and. Bing will be showing a video. Bing? Great. Okay, let's start. So um, let me start um, with this slide, with this quote that lighting design is a process and it can be learned. So um, I also want to share, while on this slide, I also want to share um, back uh, like the past weeks um, when I was thinking about, um, about this webinar, parang I just thought, na, how, how did it start that... Um, I came to love illumination. No? Um, I prefer saying the word illumi illumination, lang, no? but it's also lighting design. No? So I think it was, um, I was uh, backtracking my experiences and I think it was um, the year 2013 when there were several instances happening at the same time. And the, the most uh, impactful that I remember is I was in Singapore and if you guys know Bras Basa, it's a it's a building where they sell old books. No, um, we we go there with my friends from from SG, and parang we just had to buy a book. Parang it's it's just we're there, we need to buy a book. No, um, and then it just happens. Na parang, I, parang I feel like I don't need a book, but but I saw one book that's really cheap. It's um uh, I have it here with me. It's fifteen Singapore dollars. So I'll show. I'll share the title later. But this is a home lighting effects bible, 
And so that's what, that was 2013 and almost nine years ago. And when I read it, it just opened my eyes. Parang I realized that what was taught in school was something that it's it's not even the basics. No, it's really the parang um, the pinaka pina foundation. But in terms of strategizing how to illuminate a space, it's parang parang my eyes were opened. No, and at the same year, um, it was a year that um, I, I've had a few residential clients that were that had a very particular requirement um uh the the main uh client that i remember giving me a very particular client for lighting design is um I, i'm sure you all know her but it's uh miss chris aquino no it's it's our first home in green meadows and she said that um it has to look very um elegant at night but at daytime it should look like a like a studio, no? Because um, she shoots her cooking videos at home, no? And parang that was the first challenge, and I realized how do I do the parang it looks like a studio, no? It's really bright, but at that, at night time it should look very elegant, very moody, very textured. So I think that's where it started, no? My curiosity for lighting, and at the same time that was a stage where I met several suppliers, no? Which I will share my learnings along the way. Okay. Um, okay, so let's just have a quick icebreaker. If you can open your chat rooms or your chats uh, baba ng Zoom. Um, a personal preference, if you're going to have a dinner tonight, what kind of lighting will you want? No, Parang, would you like a very mood lighting like A or a bright one like B? What do you think? Prembing, baka you can share the answers, no? Yeah. Yeah, something... same with everyone. Most, most everyone, everyone is also saying like B. Same with me as B. Ah, ganon? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, interesting, right? So, yeah. Um, let's do the second one. So, this or that. When you, when you go home at night, would you like to have a setting na it's A or B? For this one, it's A. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, most of them answer A. Wow, yeah, okay. Yeah, most of us. A, right. A, silang lahat. Sige, wow, okay. My All right. B, okay. A. Okay, sige. And then the last one, this one. If you're gonna work, let's say you have to finish a deliverable or something, work or school, what do you prefer? Um, don't mind the window. Siguro imagine it's at nighttime. Do you feel like you just need a task light? Or you need a heavy, like a, a really um well lit and bright room. Uh, all of the answers are B. Okay, just but for me, <laughs> but for me, it's A. Something more like a dim lit lang talaga, Miss Rosie. Okay, interesting. Para soft no? lang yung mood, yes. Yeah, so I I think uh we'll we'll dive into those details later, but I think uh it all boils to down to personal preferences right yes, so um correct. let's just um i i made this uh this icebreaker because i remember you no know, um the 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 lighting design class that i took way back um the the first day that we went here i went to we went to the room uh we, we went inside and there was just one candle in the middle of the room and everyone felt na well, even different emotions, no? Yung iba parang, well, sir, wala bang power? Or what's this, no? And then some are curious, some are asking, some are, oh, maybe this is part of the of the class, but it sparked a lot of emotions, which I think is very uh, important in, in illumination and lighting design, no? So it's really, um, as we dive into the discussion, it's really client and personal preference and uh, very much attached to what our, our clients wants to feel about the space. Okay, so the first um, part of the discussion is lighting design is a process. No, So this is what I mentioned in the first um, slide earlier. And I want to share a few case studies um, just to um, share in how we do uh, lighting design in, in Hurray. No? So 
um, this case study shows that um, when there's a new project that comes in the office, um, the lighting design is not like um, secondary or it's not an afterthought. No? Um, I think um, a realization that also I learned the past years is how we were taught in school is um, maybe it was how I was taught way, way back. No? Siyempre, iba na yung, baka iba na ngayon. But um, when you do the concept, you do the plans differently. So parang it's like it's either you're good in concept and you're doing the plan separately. It's like uh, parang it's a uh, different um, para activity. No? Um, but this case study shows lang na even when we're conceptualizing pa lang the, the project, um, lighting design is a part of, of the process already. You know? So um, this is just to show um, how we do uh, mind mapping. So when we have a new project, we always have this process of design thinking and mind mapping. So it starts with the central idea um, and the, the four factors around it basically is the design objective that we want to achieve for the project. So I just want to share here, no, um, like this is a guy, he's actually a, a American Korean guy who is uh, uh, building his uh, first home in Manila. And very interesting because um, he really likes very dramatic uh, interiors, black, all black talaga, the entire space. No? And uh, if you notice there, no, lighting is always part of how we um, think about the design. No? So this is the first step. And if you'll notice, we want to, the, the lighting is already planned from the beginning. So ambient, architectural lighting. And the look actually is when we're conceptualizing, even the, the decorative light is already pre-selected. So alam na namin na, okay, this um, light fixtures match the personal, personality of the client. So we have a strategy for decorative lighting. So balance ambient, use of iconic lamps, 50s and 60s lamps, architectural lighting for interest and sculptural lighting design. So, um, and then for, for interior architectural lighting, so um, again, uh, we're, we're, we're making sure that um, to start pa lang, we know how to strategize. We're not even at the stage of doing architectural plans yet, no? Pero sa start pa lang, we want to present to the client. We're going to use magnetic track lighting. We're going to use um, uh, ambience through vertical and horizontal uh, cove lighting. Uh, we want to use uh, lighting control and to highlight the ex existing finishes. So um, it's a part of our presentation. This actually is a slide from a presentation we just did last week, no? So um, then we know that it's all part of the, co the concept, no, the aesthetic. Um, case study two, the other one is more modern. This one is a modern Filipino home that we're designing in Pampanga. Very classic, very ornate, um, really uh, more of capiz, um, metal works, and a lot of woodwork. Um, so if you notice, so the concept is embracing Filipino design culture. And you'll notice again that, sorry, there is um, a part of the lighting discussed here again on the conceptualization stage. No? So because we know it's a Filipino home, we want to make sure that it's focused on architectural uh, lighting, focused on the features, the architecture, the Filipino architectural features of the space. And also the um, materials that we're going to use, which is what I mentioned earlier. You know? So again, um, I'm going to show you some examples. We also plan in advance the decorative lighting design. So we know to start pa lang. So, so this is like day one or two after we got the project. You know? We know that we want to use a Baccarat crystal chandelier. We want to use wall sconces. We want to use um, uh, very Filipino, Hispanic um design or forms of lighting. So, uh, and then for interior architecture lighting design, so uh, focus on interior architecture because this is a very uh, grand and large house. We want to have an emphasis on grandeur. And uh, since this uh, project requires a really um, parang medyo hotel fish feel talaga, we want to focus on 
using a, a warmer Kelvin, which is 2,700 Kelvin, which I'll be explaining further on later. Okay, so this one is uh, an interesting project because this is another Korean client that we have right now. No? So um, uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are very familiar with their aesthetic and they're really into minimalism. And before I thought lang na parang maybe it's just a trend, but it's, it's really in their DNA that they really want minimalist talaga in everything. No? So um, again, the strategy here is um, we want to maxim maximize the use of natural light. This is a condo unit. Because it's a more modern and minimalist um, home, uh, we're using a more cooler Kelvin, which is 3,500 Kelvin, um, integrated architectural lighting, and soft and diffuse um, light. If you'll notice, we're not using a lot of spotlights or up lights. It's really more of linear light, which um, the, sh the photos here shows the strategy that we want. No? Um, very minimal uh down lights so number one recess magnetic track lighting filtered natural light recess lighting in minimal white housing so this is a um a new fixture that's uh, very trendy right now it's called the gypsum light the one at the bottom so hindi nyo masyadong kita yung the rim of the down light no so um additional ambiance through cove lighting light automation or light control because she's really techy and then auto sensory light no so and then the decorative lighting again it goes hand in hand architectural lighting and decorative lighting goes hand in hand when you, when we have to design no? um i think the some designers might think na decorative lighting it's just an accessory that you need to look for at the end of the project but how we do it in in Hooray is baliktad, no? At the start of the project, we match what are the lighting, the decorative lighting brands or fixtures that we feel are bagay with this project, no? And some may be sourced abroad, some are available here, but this is our chance to use yung mga wish list namin, yung mga favorite uh, namin na uh, brands like this one, Artemida Lamp. We know the Louis Poulsen all white. Um, the up, the lower right is the Bruno Morani Artemide lamp as well, and the Louis Poulsen uh, lamp. No, so everything is all white because, as mentioned earlier, client wants a very minimalist and less colors. She she really likes neutral colors. So I think I am mistaken. You no, know, the first one Kanina is a it's a gentleman, but it's more modern. This one is the Korean guy, Korean American guy. So. It's the same one, um, but this is really dramatic. He wants a very uh, classic paneling, all black with a touch of pink. Interesting. This guy wants black, but with a touch of pink. No? Um, and then, so if you notice, John, even the, 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 the lighting strategy is also mentioned. And then this is the design detail of the space. No, So if you'll notice, we're planning the lighting based on the interior architecture of the space. So since there's a lot of moldings or vertical panelings, we don't want to, to, to put too much uh, down lighting. It's really more linear light. So archetype details, high contrast, and repetitive lines. And then for the decorative fixtures, we're also planning at the same time. So we want to use uh, lighting with intricate details, lux finishes of gold and silver, gold and reeded glass no so what i'm trying to say here no so light planning is the design thinking no so um but um, i think the the learning uh, that we want to uh, really make sure that is being done in our projects is um lighting should be at the start because it affects everything along the way no so it it, it affects your shampoo in our for interior designers and architects, it's part of our deliverables to, to present perspectives, right? So, um, syempre, it will uh, affect how we do our perspectives, uh, how we'll do our plans, how we execute and monitor the site. No, So, it's a, it's a domino effect. So, it's best to do it from the very beginning. So, some tips that uh, might be helpful is... 
um, when designing, it's just the most basic part or the first step for me is identifying for your project is what's the strategy for a decorative lighting um, for the project and then the architectural. So decorative means na it's sculptural, it, uh, it gives a statement, it's eye-catching, and it's led by interior style to complement or contrast. Thus, the, the case studies that I showed earlier. And then for architectural, it's really discreet and low glare. It's functional, basically, you know, it's really functional and direct, in, uh, integrated within the architecture of the building or the space and provides task and accent lighting. So that's the pinaka step, the first step for me when we're doing the conceptual stage, no? even before doing the perspective. So that's the part that we want to make sure the client has a buy-in. Meaning, is this the lighting design that you feel you'll be comfortable with even before doing the perspectives? Because then we will uh, apply it to the, to the next presentation. No? Okay, so something that uh, uh, gives me a lot of cringe you know, when I see plans, whether it's from my team or from, from other designers. Sorry, guys. But to grid or not to grid. So, um. I'm not saying that grid is wrong, but I think we've all been there. Um, for a lot of interior designers and architects here in this webinar, we were taught in school when there's a room, you just put a like dots in a grid, diba? Madali siya, madali siya sa plates, diba? And daling gumawa ng, ng RCP without even thinking why. Because um, we were taught that you're looking at the ceiling plan without really considering the elements within the space, right? Parang nakatingin ka lang sa, sa ceiling. Parang it's, it's more of you looking up without looking down and looking left or right, no? So, parang for me, um, there's a different strategy. No, so parang when is um, a grid effective um, or like following a, a guide or a, a, like lines, no? So parang syempre, obviously, when the architecture calls for a grid or like this, in this case, this is a house in we're doing in a uh, depolog, no. So if you see the interior architecture, there's no really um choice but to follow the architecture of the ceiling, which is the the grid of the ceiling. Yang shempre may trusses, diba? And it will look off if we place lights na. Uh, so definitely this um the ceiling design with the trusses with the with the grooves calls for following a grid no so when can we be flexible uh we're adding a lot of wall lamps we're adding a lot of table lamps shelving lights so um and of course natural light for uh for daytime no so so in this case yes the grid works, no? But in some cases, so this is just an example of um, what, what areas or what projects yung, the grid doesn't work, no? Parang um, it's all based on the design. It's all based on the flexibility of the room, no? So... For me, um, if you're looking the looking at the image on the left side, it's really if the client prefers a highlight or a focal point on key items of the room, no, like this room, I really want to make sure that my collection of art is the main focal point. Then you put lights, um, focusing on those things, right? Not not on like putting the the down lights. On a grid sa ceiling, di ba? Um, and actually, this this type of lighting design or ceiling design is really more elegant, and because it it has more texture, it has more drama, no? So if you'll notice the video that we've shown earlier, the, uh, which is, is the photo on the right side, we don't have a grid um, type of ceiling design there. We have a few, but it doesn't really follow a grid because there are several light sources 
coming from one space. No? So for example, from the living room, lang, it's a very small living room, but there's a light coming from the cove, from the curtain, from the back of the TV, and the table lamp at the back of the couch. No? So meaning um, you don't need to fill up the ceiling just because you need to submit a, a, a reflected ceiling plan, di ba? So parang yun yun eh. Parang you have to learn and unlearn, no? So learning in school is to fill up the the living room and the dining room with down lights. But in actual, do you really need it, no? Kasi you can always put light sources from different parts of the room, no? Okay, so this is an example. This is a perspective, but we're actually finished the project. Um, but we, we don't have the nighttime shots. But this is an example of a client saying that um, the left one is his bedroom. Um, and he doesn't really want to focus on like a, on a grid layout. He wants a textured and very dramatic lighting design. So from the start of the project, he gave us instructions that I want the, the key furniture pieces to be highlighted and the artwork collection to be highlighted. He also have a, a, a closet space on the left side, yeah, yung cabinet, which is illuminated. So if you think about it, the the room is um you don't need again, you don't need to put too much light from the ceiling, no, because so many things are happening from different directions. No? Um and on the right side, this is just an example of um not sure if you've seen a lot of those, it's it's very uh, common now and from several suppliers they sell magnetic lights so um, it was popularized by floss um so i think the the advantage and parang that's why i like using the magnetic lights um uh, is because you can maybe you can google na lang no it's floss magnetic light but it's flexible you can remove a light and put it it's just basta pasok sa track na yun, no so this is the living room. And because why are we putting a lot of magnetic lights in the living room? Because they know that they like rearranging the living room. So we can't do yung parang specific for uh, um down lights for furniture because parang inisip niya every month they will rearrange. So when the client says that, you know na. You just need to do a flexible lighting, no? Na parang you can always rearrange yon. Okay, so the next one is design with daytime and nighttime in mind, though. So I guess the the again the common error that we sometimes do is we always think about gabilang, no? Because reflected ceiling plan is for nighttime, no? But I think sometimes we forget na. What about daytime, no? Um, is there uh, enough windows? No, for, for for example, in this case, this is just an example of showing that um, sometimes having a big window uh, is not really enough to illuminate the entire space, no? Um, like, for example, in this case, this is the condo unit of uh, Miss Pia Words back and um, she has a pretty much like it's it's very big the window, but um, the challenge is there is a building right across it. So even if it's like this is around ten in the morning, um, medyo hindi ganon pa rin ka, ka, ka bright yung room no. So that means that we also need to think about that what's the environment or what's the experience of the user when they're um in the room during daytime no um but then also of course the 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 environment or the setting at night no does it change dramatically or the, the, does a client want to have a very uh like a, a different vibe or a different mood at night no yon so what to consider for daytime lighting design so what to consider is of course the window locations skylight locations amount of light coming in from the windows, window treatments, curtains and blinds, reflective materials, and the function of the space. So this is an example of the project we did in Horizon Homes in Shangri-La, BGC. So um, 
if you'll notice, there are a lot of windows coming from, from the left side. Um, and it's really bright, no? So, but they want flexibility that when they have a party or when the clients are actually, um, they like watching movies. So this part, kita, but on the left side, there's a very huge TV here on the left side. So they want flexibility that it can have a nighttime setting, even if it's daytime. So lighting design is not only designing lights, but it's also trying to think about how to control or put elements that can control light coming from the natural daylight. No, So for uh, this case is adding, of course, curtain, and then we're also adding louvers to make sure that if they have, if they want na to medium med diffuse yung natural light, like for example, masyadong bright, afternoon sun, there's an option to to close the, the louvers or to close the curtain. But at the same time, making sure that the na the the lights, like for example, the chandelier, the down lights, the cove lightings are still very much seen. Um, what to consider for nighttime lighting? Um, window locations, uh, view outside the windows and how it will be illuminated. Okay, so very much my pet peeve when I see projects that, um, that of, obviously we're an interior design firm, so we don't have so much control about the, so, the scope of the architect sometimes. No? So I think sometimes me, me send, um, I ask the client, what's the design of the, of the outdoor? Because um, most of the projects now, they have very large windows. Um, and then I, I always ask if there's a landscape design already outside, no? And how it will be illuminated. And very common, like, oh, baka nagkataon lang sa projects that you work with, that 80 to 90 percent walang lighting design or illumination yung labas ng window. And it really para frustrates me because why put large windows when you don't know what's going to happen outside that view, right? So um, you're investing in, syempre ang mahal ng window, especially if it's really like the big ones. Um, so it's very important, if, especially if it's in the living or dining area, that will be the focal point. So important to ask the architect or the landscape designer, what's the plan um, for, for the exterior at night? No? So you know that, is it something that you want to highlight? Or is it something that you want to uh, maybe put curtains and cover it, right? So... Um, again, of course, window treatments also need to consider reflective materials, function of the space. Reflective materials is also one thing about, um, of course, for nighttime is making sure that um, you know and think about where the light will reflect on. You know? um, we, we, all, we, we all have seen lights na tumatama sa glass and then you see the, the dots. Um, tumatama sa tiles, the polished tiles, and you see the strip light hanging dahil hindi maayos yung installation. So we've been there, no? So something that you need to consider for nighttime. Um, this is just to show an example of nighttime light test, no? Um, uh, as much as we can, we really go to the site nighttime and really do the light test. Um, as in like eight o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, because, and pitch dark talaga dapat, because then we can check the Kelvin, we can check the output. So this is a project in Pampanga and we're checking um, the the fixtures before actually paying for it, no? So we don't let the client pay for millions worth of, of expensive lighting if we haven't tested it kasi syempre, again, lighting is a big investment. No? So at the same time, this is also done during light test is we also make sure to check and bring the materials on site. Very, very important because um, 
sometimes there are suppliers that just bring the lights to you or send the picture. Pang, I tell them, ang gagawin ko dyan, di ba? Kasi it's, it's not just the light design or the luminaire design. Eh. Sometimes it's also making sure that, um, di ba, ano yung effect nyo on the fabric. Imagine for interior designers and architects, choosing expensive couches, choosing expensive stones, fabric, and then not making sure that it's highlighted well, right? So that's the importance why we do the light test. So if you'll notice on the floor, though, the one in the middle is a bit warmer. So we also ask the suppliers to bring, to bring different Kelvins. Um, or different uh, di different lights will with beam angles, no? Para lang we can choose and then let the client see. Kasi some clients may feel na it's still too dark for me or is it, it's too warm for me. Something that um, we want the clients to get involved as well. No? Okay, so another example of nighttime lighting is of course making sure that um, checking and verifying with your client what's the activity to be done in the room. Um, kasi, is it for relaxation? Is it for reading? Is it for entertaining? So that's also uh, some of the important factors before designing the lighting. Okay, so talking about the Kelvin, you've been hearing me um, say Kelvin several times. So um, maybe some of, of you guys are familiar with this already, but Kelvin is used in the lighting design terminology is to measure the color temperature of a particular light bulb. In short, the higher the Kelvin rating, uh, the whiter the light will be. So this is actually connected to the, the circadian cycle, right? From sunset, from sunrise to sunset. Parang it mimics that. You no, know? so um so. In school, or maybe when you go to Wilcon or other deep posts, you won't see this machado, no? Why? Because for commercial selling, they only use the basic terminologies, which is warm white, cool white, and daylight. But in the design language, we don't use that. Does that, that those that doesn't really make sense anymore, no? Uh, para pag sinabi na three na no warm white it can be a, a lot para malaki kasi yung spectrum of warm white no it can be from 1000 to 3000 when you say cool white and dami pag sinabi mo daylight ang dami so um it was it's more of a layman's term but for for designers like us who really want to ve to be very specific in the look and the output that we want to achieve it's really kelvin that we're talking about no so this is an example, no? Um, when I go to the office, I bought a, a Xiaomi lamp sa Lazada, which is one five. And lagi ko siyang dinadala even in site meetings because I, I cannot approve um, materials without checking what will be the effect from daylight to warm light. You know, it's very important for me because I want to see the materials, what it will like, how it will look like in daytime, and how it will look that look like in nighttime. No, so because it can change again dramatically. Like, para ayon pangit pala nito, or it looks reddish pala in warm white. This one looks um like bluish in this light. No, so very important to make sure that you check the materials in different lights. So, like how some uh, no no parang few tips no. When I go to showrooms and I don't like their lighting sa showroom, so there are showrooms in Manila where parang nadidiliman ako sa lighting, I really ask them na ilabas, as in sa labas ng store, to ilabas yung tile, ilabas yung couch, ilabas yung fabric. Because, you know, as a designer, I will be liable if pagdating sa site, it looks different pala yung color. No? So, and when we do showroom designs, this is one also uh, factor that's very, very critical. You know, the checking the materials in the right Kelvin. Um, some uh, examples of materials affecting light. So it's red Nara flooring. Um, parang these are some realizations over the years. 
mirrors and glass walls, reflective materials like polished flooring and window tint color. So red Nara flooring because there was a project that we did. Um, when we started, yung buong floor is covered with tarpaulin. And then we just specified like it was like maybe nine years ago, then eight years ago. Um, and then when the, the project was finished, the contractor removed the tarpaulin. Gosh, it's super red pala yung Nara. And it bounced all over the room, no? Pati sa walls. The walls look pinkish. The ceiling look pinkish. It's because of the red Nara floor. And that's when I realized now, when checking the lighting, make sure you see all the materials, especially, uh, yun nga, the window tint color is very tricky. I realized this uh, naman in one, I think it was one Rockwell or Edades that they're um, in Rockwell, that the colors, the tint is green. And in one Rockwell, it's blue. So I realized when we're checking the color of the, the walls, it's always different in nighttime and in daytime. Kasi yun pala, the, the tint of the windows are different. Yun. Interesting lang na observation. So, a basic guide of the Kelvin um, that we always use, it starts from 2, 7, 3, 000, 3, 5, and 4, 000. So, you can see the guides naman here, what's the light appearance, the ambience, and what's it's best for. So, I think this is the most tricky part, no? Um, 2, 7 for me is like, going to the lobby of Manila Peninsula. No? So my, the fav my favorite part is going there after 6 p.m. Very um, uh, mood, uh, like very elegant and luxurious, but very cozy. That's the reference. Um, very few clients go for 2,700 Kelvin. But I notice in, in um, Western countries, like in Europe, they really prefer this Kelvin as a standard because maybe it's because of the weather. Or like, syempre, pag winter, it's, it's, it's parang more cozy using a 2.7 Kelvin. Um, and here in the Philippines, parang when you say warm, several clients prefer 3,000 talaga. No? So this is a pinaka standard that I notice um, a lot of clients go for. Yung 2.7, they feel it's, it's too yellowish na. But we still push it for some clients. Um, now, 3, 5, and 4,000. 3, 5 is a Kelvin that you won't normally um, get from suppliers. They won't normally offer that. But when we built our house um, three years ago, um, you can request for 3,500 Kelvin. It's just you need to request and order it. Uh, I think Shemper from the factory from abroad, no. So um, that's my most favorite Kelvin, actually. Pag sinabi ng client na they don't want warm, what can we do daylight or white? I don't normally use four thousand Kelvin. Three thousand five Kel Kelvin is the the best one. So it's not common then in depots. You won't see this, but for special like suppliers that you go to that the they carry brands. This is a special request that you can get. Yon. Okay, to light up or to light down. So I just saw this the other day and interesting how um, like way, way back, no, they did the lighting test already of how to light the, the statue of Lincoln statue in Washington. And they were testing the effect of putting the down, the, the fixture, the luminaire, from, from the top of the head compared to the bottom of the head, diba? And so much difference and ang laki ng effect, no? Na, na sometimes we can all also apply in how we um, put our fixtures in our projects. No? So there are seven lighting directions and distributions. And um, I think um, the challenge is we're always... Uh, focus on doing the first one, no? Direct concentrated distribution. Parang when we do lighting design, it's always like 80 to 90% of the fixture naka-focus lang doon sa, sa down, di ba? But there are so many sources that for me, I like mixing up uh, all of these, no? So merong diffuse distribution, 
I like also doing a lot of up, up lights, the third one. And then, of course, um, the, the omnidirectional are your um, table lamps, your chandeliers. So, and then the direct, indirect diffuse distribution naman is like what you use usually for wall sconces, interior and exterior wall sconces. So, I think for interest, no, it's also useful to know that you it's it's nice to mix different lighting distributions. If you put like in a space, maybe in a living room and dining room, you use mostly the first one, then it's going to be a boring or like a flat lighting design space. So. Okay, so something, something to also consider you know, for nighttime lighting design is for for designers, it's also your chance to. I, I know I I always do this. It's always your chance to to specify your favorite lighting designer brands. No, so you see, this is um, uh, George Nelson. We have Floss. We have um, and Tradition, the famous Artem Artemide Ptolemaeo lamp. We have a Baccarat lamp, and we also have a Capellini lamp. So when there is a project that requires like several lighting sources, I always check my favorite brands and specify. Agad, parang I always recommend write it right away to the client. And usually naman they, they get sold. And um, kasi I, uh, what we need to tell our clients is to make sure that they also understand that um, decorative lightings are also like art. No, they they were designed by great designers, um, and there's a lot of story behind it. So. Okay, so another major, a lot of information, but this is a guide in um, in the lighting design that for you to identify. It's basically a guide for you to identify how to light a space no so if you if you feel like what i mentioned earlier is a bit overwhelming so this is a guide but it it feels a lot but it's a checklist basically if you if you really want a certain zone or a certain space to be well lit no so something to consider is the first one is requirement for the lighting referring to is the use of the space architecture the psychology of the user, the definition of a lighting concept. The next one is the choice of appropriate luminaries. Do you want to use direct, indirect, vertical, or you can mix all of them? Arrangement of fixtures, as I mentioned earlier, do you want to do it related to a grid along a line, related to the architecture, or related to the furniture? So this is a uh, thing with the, what I mentioned earlier. Now, what's the What's the, what's the focal point no, in the in the room? No? The, does the client want to focus on flexibility? Does the client want to focus on the walls because he paid for an expensive stone for the walls? Or gusto niya ba yung art and yung furniture yung ma-highlight? No? And then dimensioning is appropriate um, determination of the illuminance level, adjustment of luminaries, adjustment of luminaire position. These things, your lighting supplier, will be able to help you. Okay, so that's the so, uh, the the lighting guide, which we try to practice, but it can be a bit overwhelming. But when you get used to it, it will become like second nature na for you guys. Okay, layer your light. No? Um, another is one way to think of lighting that a room with no shadows is like an overcast day. Duh. So lately, uh, it's been raining in Manila and diba, sometimes you feel like parang, parang I don't feel like working or I feel like just watching a movie because ganun kalaki yung impact of, of an overcast day. And we don't realize it, but in the spaces that we design, sometimes if we don't add textures or layers, um, the user might also feel the same way. No? So it's important to layer your light. So next, um, the there, there are three main parts of the of the layering your light. The first one is ambient light. So this is um, a, a very poetic quote by uh, the late lighting designer Richard Kelly. And I like how 
he described ambient light no so i'm just going to read something but if you if you notice his words no basically ambient light is the even glow there are no shadows nothing to tell you what to look at basically that's ambient light um and we know what it means in lighting design no that means cove lighting um if you put a lot of down lights from the ceiling that's automatically ambient light um if you put like um a big like for offices usually that's ambient light if you if you put trofford lights on the ceiling no so that's the first one to layer your, your light identify your ambient light the next one is the focal glow so again very poetic um words um and the focal glow how he defined it is it tells us what to look at the most important element in the room and gives you a sense of space so it clear naman diba focal glow when when the person or the client walks into the room what what do you want that client or that person to to look at right you don't want to look at the ceiling which is white lang you don't want the 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 person to look at on bare walls so like if the client will say this is a very important artwork i just bought it it's a collectible piece then you highlight it when you illuminate that um artwork that's actually your focal glow so that's the second layer no the first one is ambient light the second is the focal glow and the third one is the sparkle so this one i really like kasi sometimes we forget about the sparkle so how he describes the sparkle is it stimulates and arouses appetites it's like chandeliers in the in a room and sequins on dresses no some very um like details that sometimes we miss that this adds interest to a space no so those are the three layers of light that um siguro parang something that we should not forget when designing a space so i just want to show some examples of of the um recent projects that we did also just to show um like for example in the middle photo the ambient light is obviously the one on top of the shelf um the focal glow is the one um on the table the table lamp and the light illuminating the stone and the sparkle is the chandelier you know so if you'll notice there are not just putting down lights and and actually you know for the for this office in the the middle photo wala kaming nilagay diyan na na yung madaming down lights which is surprising for an office space but it just worked well because we distributed the light evenly by putting different light sources so on the right naman oops sorry on the right you'll see that there is the ambiance is the cove lighting on the right wall there is a focal glow on the painting uh the, it's a collectible piece also and the table lamp and then there's sparkle in the baccarat chandelier you know so again it makes your eyes wander and imagine if we just put down a lot of like fill up the ceiling with down lights and diba it's just it's just plain boring already okay and another example no so focal glow is the are the cold lightings um the the focal uh, the ambiance of the co is the cold lighting the the uh, light on the wall is also ambiance the chandelier for me is the focal glow and for me is the the sparkle is the maybe the the reflection from the mirror and the sparkle of the decors the gold decors and the glass decors in the table okay and lighting control for flexibility so um we always you hear the word automation no but i think the the right terminology to use is if we're only going to use uh con uh an a system to to automate or to to centralize the lighting of a house or a, or a space i think the the right terminology to use is lighting control and we use automation if it's like a brain no the para a full brain um, operating the security the 
the cooling system, sounds, lahat yon for me. Um, it's just for us, we we realize that clients get overwhelmed hearing the words automation. So we want to make sure that we use the right terms, which is lighting control for dimming. Okay, so we all seen yung mga ganitong um, switches in projects. And gosh, uh, when I saw uh, mga ganitong project way, way back, I said, ayoko na bumalik sa ganyang project. That's also another realization. No? And imagine this one can become something like this, diba? Um, and this is very common nowadays. There are a lot of suppliers, re um, very reliable suppliers who can do this. Um, so this is lighting control. It doesn't have the, to be the full automation na agad, no? So also an example, they can do large buttons, engraving, you can do button configurations. And of course, the most advanced pa is yung isa na may screen, no? But the, the, the left one is a basic, but you can also request for the one na merong screen. And what I like about home automation and lighting controls is there are so many um, designs available right now. Like um, the one on the upper left is from Elise. Super nice. It's really modern with a backlit yung circle. The one in Lutrod, yung mga rectangle on top, are, they have so many finishes from, from plain, uh, solid colors to metals. Um, and then the other brands have glass. Um, this one from Vimar is, is very like classic looking. Interesting, no? Parang there are so many available switch designs that can help you get more excited in, in designing and your, your, your spaces, the lighting design of your spaces. So what to, when to consider lighting control or automation? Uh, for me, it's uh, users prefer flexible lighting scene for the house. Area has more than three lighting switches. The client prefers a smart home controlled by your internet. When dimming is a priority because the dimming of lighting controlled houses or spaces talaga, it's perfect talaga. It's parang Dimming, looking at the dimming alone is para, wow, ganda na talaga. And then all-in-one integration with security cooling and audiovisual. And I think that's, that's the right, last part. No? My takeaways are lighting is a part of every, of every design stage. No? Um, every step of the way, let's not forget thinking about lighting. No? When you design, when you source, when you go to the site, when you meet the clients, when you meet your suppliers, it's always a part of the discussion. Uh, the next one is layer your light sources. Um, don't just depend or uh, put a lot of down lights, put a lot of directional. Remember the seven um, directions that you can use. Always do a light test for materials. Uh, bring your materials on site, bring your materials uh, when you um, look for uh, the light, light fi lighting fixture, and then invest in good and reputable lighting brands. Um, and I also want to share the books that I've been reading the past years. The, the second one is the one that I bought like nine years ago. I'm not sure if there's one, but maybe there's an ebook somewhere. Um, the third one is usually very uh it's it's usually required no for for lighting courses the the first and the the fourth one are also very good books no so they're all a mix of strategic lighting design and technical um lighting explanations so those are mostly thick books so um if you want to know more about it you can get those at amazon so for me, just to end the discussion today, it's to light or not to light, there is power in resistance. Thank you. We would like to thank again you, our principal designer in Hurry Design, 
for sharing your expertise and time with us. For everyone, sadly, this is the last of our four webinars, but there is a lot more to come. Just stay tuned for, stay tuned for that and follow us on our social media outlets, Instagram at Hooray Design underscore, Facebook and YouTube at Hooray Design. And don't forget to visit our website, HoorayDesign.com. We thank everyone for taking the time to spend the Saturdays with us. Despite the long weekends and the long holiday week, we hope we're able to share some new valuable insights that inspire you to create your own space that celebrates you. This has been from Miss Rosie Bing from Hooray Design, and we will see you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Happy weekend. Bye. Happy weekend. Happy weekend. <laughs>